My name is Captain Ashley Kessler. I'm on the teaching staff at San Jacinto College, the Maritime Technology and Training Center campus. Radar plotting. This is part one of a five part series on radar plotting. This part is going to basically explain the basic radar triangle. The objectives for the basic radar triangle at the end of this presentation, you will be able to one, construct the basic radar triangle, two, correctly label the basic radar triangle, and three, determine the six solutions from the basic radar triangle. You will need plotting tools and materials for radar plotting. The plotting tools you will need, one, dividers or a compass, two, navigation triangles, parallel ruler or roller plotter, three, a mechanical pencil, and four, a calculator or a nautical slide rule. Materials you will need is one, a radar transfer plotting sheet, number 5089, or two, a maneuvering board, number 5090. Throughout my videos, I will be using the radar transfer plotting sheets. We're going to be building a basic radar triangle. It's going to have three legs to it. And these three legs are, one, is our own ship's true course and speed or our true motion. Two, relative motion. Three, the contact's true course and true speed or their true motion, which we cannot see on the radar. There are three basic radar plotting labeling conventions used for radar plotting. I will be using the E R M triangle. It's mentioned in the publication 1310 Radar Navigation and Maneuvering Board Manual. And also mentioned in that manual is the RTM method of radar plotting. And in Europe, they use the WOA method for radar plotting. Each one of those legs represent the yellow triangle below. For radar plotting, I'm going to be using a sea stabilized north up relative motion radar. My range scale is going to be 12 nautical miles. My own ship's true course and speed is going to be 000 degrees at 20 knots. And my observation interval is going to be six minutes. The advantage is six minutes, it's one tenth of an hour, which really facilitates time speed distance calculations. At 20 knots in six minutes, I will travel two miles. I only have to move the decimal one place to the left. If I traveled 18 knots in six minutes, I will have traveled 1.8 miles. And you only have to move the decimal one place to the right. The six solutions you will be able to derive from the basic radar triangle are one, the direction of relative motion, or DRM speed of relative motion, or SRM, three, the closest point of approach, or CPA, and the bearing of closest point of approach, four, the time to closest point of approach, or TCPA, five, the contact true course, and six, the contact true speed. I mentioned I will be using the ERM triangle. Here are the triangle sides and labels. E to R is going to be our own ship's true course and true speed. R and M is going to be relative motion. E and M, the contact true course and true speed, or I like to think of them, T-H-E-M.
This is a standard radar transfer plotting sheet. Along the left hand edge of this plotting sheet, you can see four distant scales. A six mile scale, a 12 mile scale, a three mile scale, and a 24 mile scale. Along the right hand side, there's a speed scale in knots. We will not be using that scale. At the bottom of the plotting sheet, which you cannot see on this video, is a logarithmic time speed distance scale. I like to scratch off the rain scales that I'm not going to be using. Since I said we're going to be using a 12 mile rain scale, I have circled the 12 mile scale. If I looked at my radar, the heading flash would be heading due north. Some people put this on the plotting sheet, some people do not put it on, on, the, on the plotting sheet. I mentioned at 20 knots in 6 minutes we travel 2 miles. So on the 12 mile rain scale I'm going to measure 2 nautical miles. And I'm also going to put that in the middle of the plotting sheet. I teach my beginning students to do this. If you don't remember what E to R is, it's at the bottom of the plotting sheet. E is always zero knots. E is the beginning of our true course and speed. E is going to be the beginning of the contact true course and speed. So here we are at E at zero knots, heading north at 20 knots. That's our E to R O of, of, of the triangle, sorry. I get this contact on my radar. I measure the range and bearing using my variable range marker or VRM and my electronic bearing line or EBL. Then I'm going to measure the distance by going to the 12 mile scale and measuring 11 miles. Then I'm going to get my ruler, put it here at E and stick a dot out here at 11 miles and I'm going to label this R00. The R stands for a reference. For a reference, I need a time and a place. The time is zero, zero minutes on the clock. If that's on my vessel, I'd use the ship time. The R is for the place, the range, and the bearing. Since I have six minutes before I plot this contact again, I might as well do something. So our E to R has to be part of the triangle. E to R. So we're going to parallel this E to R and this E to R is going to become this E to R. This is two miles long, zero knots heading north at 20 knots, zero knots heading north at 20 knots. We have one leg of the triangle done. Six minutes later, I get another set of range and bearings using my variable range marker and electronic bearing line and I'm going to plot and label this and as M06 or minute 6 for 6 minutes later. Now I have R and M which means I can now draw a relative motion line and the R and M is also at the bottom of the plotting sheet if you forget what R and M stands for. So this is a relative motion line. This is very important because this is how this vessel is going to track down this radar toward us. From this relative motion line, you can obtain four of the six solutions. You can find direction of relative motion, speed of relative motion, closest point of approach and bearing of CPA, and time the closest point of approach. Let's find direction of relative motion first. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to parallel or move this relative motion line to the middle. We won't draw a line but we're just going to put a little tick mark down here so the direction or DRM of relative motion is 220 degrees. We can find speed of relative motion. There's two ways to do this. One way is you can get your dividers or your compass, measure the distance between R00 and M06, measure that distance on the 12 mile scale, then divide that by six minutes. 
An easier way to do it is get you the vitals of your compass, measure the distance between R00 and M06, take it over here to the 12 mile scale, and if it's 2.3 miles long, the relative speed is 23 knots. Not the true speed of the contact, the relative speed of the contact. The next thing we can find from this relative motion line is closest point of approach. And it is always going to be a right angle or 90 degrees from the relative motion line. So we're going to draw a right angle. Anything that makes a right angle a 90 degree turn. You can use your parallel ruler, you can use your triangle to do this anything that makes a 90 degree turn and this is your closest point of approach. If you measure that distance, take it to the 12 mile scale, it's probably going to show that this contact is going to miss you a little over one mile since that's a two mile range ring. But side closest point of approach, we can get bearing of CPA. From your coastal navigation trainings, you generally learned that a bearing was from us to something else. So this is going to be exactly the same way. Bearing a CPA is going to be from us, the CPA, to just a little tick mark along the edge. Oops. So the bearing of CPA would be 135 degrees. If I was on my vessel, and I looked out off my starboard quarter at 135 degrees, a little over one mile away, this is going to be the closest point of approach of that vessel. The last thing we can find from this relative motion line is what time is closest point of approach or CPA. There's two ways to do this. One way is to do a time speed distance calculation. Get you the vitals of your compass, measure between R00 and CPA. Then divide that by the relative speed you got before, then you can find time to closest point of approach or TCPA. An easier method to do it is just get your dividers or your compass, measure between R00 and M06, and walk it down just like you're measuring distance on the DR track line. So then we're going to have minute 12, we're going to have minute 18, we're going to have minute 24, minute 30, minute 36. And out of most Coast Guard questions, you should be able to eyeball the correct answer here. Remember, halfway between 30 and 36 is 33. So it looks like CPA is going to be around 34 minutes or so. So from that relative motion line, you can find direction of relative motion, speed of relative motion, closest point of approach, and bearing of CPA, and time to closest point of approach, or TCPA. So you can't tell me relative motion is not important to us. Now we can finally finish the third leg of our triangle. The first leg was our true course and true speed. The second leg was relative motion. Now we're going to finish the E to M of the triangle. And this is going to be the contacts true course and true speed. This is also at the bottom of the plotting sheet. If you forget what E to M is or E to R or R to M is, they're all at the bottom of the plotting sheet. For us to find the true course of this contact, we're going to parallel or move E to M. Remember, E0 knots heading toward M. We're going to parallel that to the middle of the plotting sheet and just put a tick mark along the azimuth out here. So the contact's true course is 315 degrees. To find the true speed of the contact, exactly like we found relative speed. You measure the distance between E and M using your dividers or your compass. Take it over to the 12 mile scale. It looks like this is going to be about 1.7 miles long. So the true speed of this contact is 17 knots.
the relative speed was 23 knots, but the contact's true speed is 17 knots. This is the basic triangle. This has to be completed before we can do anything else. What's unique about this E to M of the triangle is that it's going to show the aspect of the vessel. It's going to invoke the steering and sailing rules for which navigation lights you're going to see on this vessel. Whether you're going to be overtaking this vessel, whether you're going to be on a head-on situation, or you're going to be in a crossing situation. So this aspect represents the navigation of rules 13, 14, or 15. In this situation, we're going to see this port light and masthead light, which is going to make this a crossing situation under rule 15. As far as relative motion goes, using its relative motion line, this vessel is on a heading of 315 degrees. So what this vessel is basically going to do, it's going to crab down this relative motion line. So at M6, we see the port light and mass lights. At minute 12, we see the port light and mass lights. At M18, we see the port light and mass lights. At M24, we still see the port light and mass lights. Same thing at M30, a port light and mass light. However, when we look off at starboard quarter at CPA, we'll be see both her port and starboard side lights and masthead lights. And at M36, we'll be able to see her starboard light and mass lights. So that's how relative motion works. This contacts on the heading of 315 degrees but it's crabbing down this relative motion line toward us. So let's review our radar plotting objectives here. In this presentation, we discussed and demonstrated one, how to construct and label the basic radar plotting triangle. Then you were able to determine two, one, the direction and speed of relative motion, the closest point of approach or CPA and bearing a CPA, three, the time the closest point of approach, and four, the contact's true speed. If you have any questions about this video, you're welcome to email me at, at my college email account at ashley.kessler at sjcd.edu.